Well, good evening, everybody. I'm so glad that you joined us for Engage Student Ministries Online. We have come together again to learn about God's Word. Well, I just wanted to take this moment and say a huge, huge thank you to Rosemary Wilson. She has spent the last year and a half pouring into and investing in our students at Engage Student Ministries, and she has chosen to step down from youth ministry due to just so many things that are going on in her life right now. We totally understand where she's coming from in this season. And so we just wanted to say thank you to Rosemary for everything that you've done for our students. You are amazing. Our students love you. And students, if you could just reach out to Rosemary, send her a message, a text, or something like that, or if you don't have a contact with her, just go ahead and message me and I'll get the information to her. But we just wanted to say a huge thank you to Rosemary and let her know that she is loved and that she will be greatly missed. So I just wanted to let you know about that before we moved on in youth group tonight because she is so very important to us and so vital in our youth ministry and wanted to just let everyone know about that. We so hope to get together very, very soon. We miss being together as a youth group and hope that we can get together soon. You know, over these last few months, we've done a series in the Beatitudes called Above and Beyond. We've had a great time with it, learning all about these nine Beatitudes that Jesus preached about in his Sermon on the Mount. But we finished that up, and we have another great lesson coming to you tonight. And lately, we've been stuck inside. All of you can identify with that. Lately, we've had no option to get out in the community or do much of anything unless you're grocery shopping or going on a walk. And it can get pretty disappointing pretty quickly if you're pent up inside too long or just can't see your friends or your family or whatever for too long. We need people in our lives to help us in our time of need, and we need to be able to connect to God on a daily basis to help us stay thriving in life, not just surviving. Well, tonight, Daryl and Misty are going to be sharing a message along those lines, and we're so very excited for them to do so. If you can, grab a cozy blanket and some chocolate and some graham crackers and some marshmallows as we gather around the campfire with Daryl and Misty tonight. Welcome, Daryl and Misty. Welcome, Engage, to youth group at the Hayes House. All right. So, you guys may or may not know that May is Mental Health Awareness Month. So on this first Wednesday of May, we want to take the night to discuss your mental health and let you know that we're that you are not alone. So first, I want to ask you a question. I also want to ask this to our students that are also participating. So the first question I want to ask is, what has been the worst part of quarantine so far? The worst part about being in quarantine is probably the fact that I can't be with my friends and I can't go and see anyone and I can't go hang out with anyone. So that's probably been the worst part of quarantine. Not being able to see my friends. I have really missed my friends and family and like just seeing people and in general, I think. And I miss shopping. <laughs> it's not being able to see my friends because I see my friends so often it's just kind of hard not to. It's probably just like not being able to go to church and not being able to go to work. Um, I just really wanted to get out of the house. And <laughs> I think everyone at this point really wants to get out of the house. Okay, for me, I know that the worst part is the separation from my friends and family, not being able to get together with them and hang out and the longer that I go that I can't be with them, you know, I'm getting pretty sad and depressed. The but things I that I'm struggling with during the quarantine is I'm really missing our date nights together that we did on a regular basis. Um, and I'm also missing family and friends. I know it's hard when we can't go or do the things that we normally get to do. Um, but I want you to know that you're not alone in that. So tonight, we're going to be talking about Jeremiah, and Daryl is going to read a passage in Jeremiah, chapter 20, verses 14 through 18. The scriptures say, Yet I curse the day I was born. May no one celebrate the day of my birth. I curse the messenger who told my father, Good news, you have a son. Let him be destroyed like the cities of old that the Lord overthrew without mercy. Terrify him all day long with battle shouts. 
because he did not kill me at birth. Oh, that I have died in my mother's womb, that her body had been my grave. Why was I ever born? My entire life has been filled with trouble, sorrow, and shame. You see, just like Jeremiah, we've all been there. And we've all asked the question, God, why am I here on this earth? Now, to understand why Jeremiah is feeling this way, we're going to look a little deeper into the situation of what he's dealing with. You see, Jeremiah, Jeremiah, also known as the weeping prophet, suffered from rejection by people he reached out to and by people he loved. God called him to preach, but had forbidden him to marry and have children. He lived alone, ministered alone, was poor, ridiculed, and rejected. So let me ask you and our students this. Here's another question. Have you felt alone during this quarantine that we've been going through? Have I felt alone during this time of quarantine? Yeah, a little bit. Um, especially not being able to go see people and hang out with people and my friends and stuff. It's been a little lonely. Sometimes I feel alone during quarantine. Not a lot, but I mean, sometimes we just have our days where we just feel alone. During the beginning of quarantine, I was a little anxious um, because I live with my grandparents and I don't want them to like get it and I don't want to spread germs to them because obviously they would be way more affected by it than I would be. I felt alone during quarantine because like I said I'm so used to seeing my friends on a regular basis and it's kind of weird not seeing them all the time because I've been seeing them like my whole life it's kind of weird. We all have. One way or another, we have felt this way. So let's look at Jeremiah again. Um, he is going through all of these big feelings. These are big feelings that he's going through. And through the midst of all of this, he is still displaying a great faith, spiritual faith, and also great strength in God. And He's just being honest about how he's feeling during all of this. Which is what we all need to be doing, not just now, but always. Be honest with yourself, be honest with your parents, and above all else, be honest with God. And then we have a third question how, that we want to ask you. Sorry. How hard is it for you to be honest about your feelings? Um, Depending on the situation, I guess. It can be tough and it cannot be. I guess I've always been a super open person about everything, but it kind of just depends on the subject. Some things are a little more touchy than others. Sometimes it is hard for me to express how I feel or like my feelings because I don't know, sometimes I just don't want to tell somebody, but it's really good to tell somebody so that... <laughs> There's a willow. Um, so like, it's just good to tell somebody, but it is hard sometimes for me. It's not very hard for me to be open with my feelings because, I don't know, I guess I kind of take after my dad because he's definitely open with his feelings. And if he, like, he'll definitely tell you. So, I don't know, I guess I kind of take after him. So it's not very hard for me to you know, be honest with my feelings. I know for me, it is very hard to be honest about my feelings because sometimes I feel that if people see the way I feel or how I'm dealing with things, that that could be a sign of weakness. But that's a lie. That is a lie that the enemy puts in our heads because that's absolutely not true. And what well, who we should be looking about, looking to for answers is Jesus. I mean, he is an example of what to do when this happens. Yes, yes, Jesus actually felt this way. And with what Misty just said, that should bring us all comfort. There's another set of scriptures that we're going to read for you guys this evening, and we want you to take it to heart. Mark 14, verses 34 through 36. 
It says, He told them, My soul is crushed with grief to the point of death. Stay here and keep watch with me. He, want, he went on a little further and fell to the ground. He prayed that if it were possible, the awful hour awaiting him might pass him by. Abba, Father, he cried out, everything is possible for you. Please take this cup of suffering away from me. Yet, I want your will to be done, not mine. You see, in this passage, Jesus is hurting and Jesus is suffering. He says, my soul is crushed with grief to the point of death. So yeah, Jesus knows what you're going through. So how does that how does that make you feel when you know that Jesus knows exactly what you're going through? I know it makes me feel that there's no better person to run to for advice. And what does he do in this situation? Well, right there in the scripture it says that he prays to his father, who is the father in heaven. So that just tells me that that should be what we do, right? Pray, right? <laughs> Jesus prayed so hard that if we look at the scriptures, Misty was just referencing Luke 22, verse 44, it says, He prayed more fervently and was in such agony of spirit that his sweat fell to the ground like great drops of blood. You know, Jesus was in agony. The scripture is very, very clear about this. But you know, he didn't let that stop him from reaching out to his father, to our father. But that is, and that is exactly what we need to be doing when we are going through this. And if you, if you feel like this, if you're having these feelings, you know, during this time, during any time, it really doesn't matter. Uh, you need to be reaching out to someone. You know, it could be anybody. You just need to be reaching out to somebody. So tell your parents, your guardians, your siblings, your friends. Talk to your youth leaders. We're all here for you guys. You know, Psalms 34, 18, it says, The Lord is close to the brokenhearted. He rescues those whose spirits are crushed. And... You know, he's, he's waiting for you. He's, he's close to you and he's waiting for you. So if he's already waiting for you, you know, what are you waiting for? You know, just reach out to him. So anybody who has ever been in a class with me, there's always an activity. Always an activity. So, I do have an activity of something that I want you to do, and we did ask uh, the students participating to do this as well. So, I want you to find a piece of cardstock or a piece of paper, you know, something small. I want you to pick a verse. Uh, you can pick any of these verses that are on the screen if you don't know where to go. Something that will remind you of what God is doing in your life or something that will lift you up. I know this is a verse that I do keep around the house among other verses, um, and it is Zephaniah 317. And it says, The Lord your God in your midst, the Mighty One, will save. He rejoices over you with gladness, and He will quiet you with His love, and He rejoices over you with singing. So I want you to write out a verse and put it somewhere where you will see it and it will remind you, whether that be in the bathroom. So every time you go to the bathroom, it's on your mirror or it's on your mirror in your bedroom or your headboard. So as soon as you wake up in the morning, you are reminded. If you spend a lot of time in the kitchen, put it on the outside or the inside of the kitchen cabinet. And if you want to do more than one, I have more than one around my, and they are just constant reminders for that when I go through a depress, depressive state that he is there with me. Okay, and just remember, everybody goes through these times. And once again, Misty and I want you guys to know you are not alone no matter what you're going through. Let's all bow our heads and pray together. 
Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus, Lord. Father, we're so thankful that we can come to you, Lord. We know you're waiting for us with open arms, Lord, just wanting us to reach out, Lord. And Father, we lift our students up right now, Lord. Whatever they're dealing with, Lord, Father, please just let them feel your presence. Let them know that you're there. Give them that reassurance that you can help them through this time, Lord. Father, they need reassurance that it's okay not to be okay, Lord, but they also need to know that as they deal with mental health issues and whether it's during trying times like we're all dealing with right now or whether it's just through standard stages of life lord father they need to know that you're there and they can reach out to you lord so father please bring peace upon them tonight lord father we pray for all of our family and friends um that that is so vast lord it's so far and wide lord this prayer um that we're praying tonight lord that covers our family and friends that covers all of your guys's family and friends uh, people maybe in your family that have others that they know that are dealing with mental health um, father we just ask that you reach out to all of these people Lord whether they're dealing with something right now whether they're going to be dealing with something um, and just help them through and give them that comfort father we also pray this evening Lord for our church Lord we lift our church up to you Lord and no matter who who in our congregation, who in our leadership is maybe dealing with mental health right now, Lord, or may in the future be dealing with it, Lord, Father, we just lift them up to you also. Father, we're thankful once again that we can come to you in this manner and reach out to you, Lord, no matter what's going on in our lives. Please be with each and every one of us. Bless our lives. Bless our homes. Keep us all safe. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right, well, thanks for joining us this evening for Youth Group. Um, and we love you guys and we hope that we get to see you soon and we can all be around a nice cozy campfire maybe making s'mores together sounds good to me all right bye guys bye awesome thank you so much for this encouragement tonight we are so grateful to know that when we are alone and discouraged god is there to help us in our time of trouble he is our constant in all the trials that we have in our life. So we hope that you enjoyed tonight. We hope to catch you again next week. And as always, please reach out to us if you need us. We love you guys very much, and we want to connect with you very soon. God bless you. We'll see you next week.